Hey, good morning everyone and welcome back to another live stream today. Um, I will be showing you how to set up a nice environment scene using um, MASH and also some texture deformers to create a nice realistic looking environment based of height maps, which are pretty convenient um, ways to create realistic or actually physical correct environments. So before we jump right into it, I will just wait a bit until more people are here and then we get right into it. And in the meantime, um, I just want to make you guys aware that I am most active on my Twitter channel. Um, so if you haven't done so, feel free to follow me on Twitter uh, because I will posting all, all my recent tutorials, all the live sessions, other information interesting links on my Twitter. So be sure to, to become a follower on Twitter and you will be always up to date with the stuff I am posting. And weirdly enough today, I'm not sure why the, the thumbnail of my MASH instancing tweet is wrong. It's still on CryptoMad, but as you can see, it is actually about the life, uh, about the environments and MASH and stuff. So and this should just be a little teaser image. I won't be setting up this scene or maybe I just might be setting up this scene. I'm not so, so sure yet, but this is just a very nice looking environment with all these rocks and trees everywhere. So, uh, hey everyone, I see you already active in the chat. Welcome everyone. So I'll just give it another minute until we start and then I'll jump right into it. And in the meantime, feel free to ask any questions. Um, if you have anything to ask, I guess I'm I'm waiting so I can ask answer a few questions. And by the way, is the sound correct again? I need to ask every time. Is it on both speakers? I hope it is. Yeah. So and also, I made sure that my uh, my Maya won't um, that I won't have technical issues. I hope so. Um, I set up everything. I know where I'm saving my scene, so I shouldn't be a big problem. Good. It's on both speakers. Nice. And I think I also changed the live stream settings to incorporate a higher latency. So you should be able to see better graphics or like a better r resolution. I think I did that. Yeah, it should be. You should also have the option to enable DVR, so we'll see. Um, so today I will be using MASH for sure. I will show you a, a few little tricks because MASH is like, I always thought it's mostly for motion graphics, but then I actually got the hang of it and it's pretty sweet to create big environments very easy yeah so I hope the the stream itself is still fast enough so there's no delay we'll see about that because I changed the latency to a bigger one so depending on my internet connection uh, we might it might be a bit laggy but I hope it's fine oh that's really great Tim I like to hear that I think it has been now, like I properly started tutorials maybe a year ago, maybe one and a half years ago. So it's great that I can help you. Really cool. So let's see how many, 32 people watching. Okay, I guess it's time to start. Otherwise you guys get bored. So as you can see, if I hide the internet for now, you can see I've got an empty Maya session. Let me just switch to my wake Wacom. So you can see it's pretty empty, nothing going on here. I just, uh, untitled scene, I just saved it so there's nothing in it. So the first thing to set up environments is I guess to get some terrain or some geometry. And after that, I guess I will be um, just using a tree for instancing. I'm not entirely sure if it will be a tree, maybe just some grass or something, we'll see. Um, so how do I get an environment? Like normally you would go into Mudbox or whatever or ZBrush and sculpt the terrain. Um, but currently like I'm a lazy guy, so I was doing a bit of research and I found, found a nice little way to, to do it, uh, using a hype map. I guess some of you know the trick. It's nothing new, I guess, but I found it pretty helpful. So 
I was just searching for terrain height maps and I got actually the first result is called terrain party I checked that out and this is actually exactly what I want um, I have a tutorial on ZD focus and nuke if you check the channel yeah okay so terrain party is a pretty nifty thing you can browse anywhere around the world and create this little rest of pixels here and this will actually generate your height map from that location so as I'm currently in Vancouver I thought why not recreate the landscape there so I'm moving over to Canada and in here like right in North Vancouver is a pretty big mountain area so let's just try to get environments from here and you can see it's currently this the square is 18 kilometers so I just want to make it as small as possible because 8 kilometers in my is still pretty huge so I think you can also visualize it in with different map types so you can see already how the environment looks like so which might be more interesting maybe something around here where you have this valley I guess valley as well so let's just maybe go in here oh this is even better so you see it's I have a hard time choosing a nice location but let's just choose this guy and then I hit download and let's call this north Vang or oh, let's just do camel case North Vancouver okay so now it's saving or downloading it should be about eight megabytes or something four okay I'm just storing this in the folder let's just jump there training nice scenes I'll put it into scenes I, I I guess you don't see the display currently so where is it assets there we go paste extract here okay I'm just extracting the folder so I'll just move it over so that that was the download process so I go to that website download the height map and then I am on my desktop you can see here's a folder and you get a few different results there so I always like to use the one of the most detail and that's the first two. So just seeing uh, based on the file size, I was choosing them and they're all pretty similar, but it's a pretty cool result. I'm about Houdini, uh, as, as I'm not a really Houdini guy, I have a hard time doing tutorials because I don't feel that comfortable in it, but I'm slowly getting the hang of it. So I will be, focusing more on Houdini stuff so anyways you can see now in on the desktop here oops this is the height map so it looks not that spectacular but it it will work pretty cool so in the on the terrain.party website I chose eight kilometers so what I will be doing now is credit plane which is on default one unit so to get eight kilometers so the one unit is one centimeter so 10 centimeters hundred so this is one meter 10 meters thousand meters and then I guess is that correct I guess it's not correct you see now I'm one meter 10 meters 100 meters thousand meters now we're right so this would be 8,000 uh, eight kilometers if my math is right I guess not but Anyway, so zooming out, I need to change my camera, clipping planes to maybe 10 and a few more zeros here, and we see it in here. So currently my grid is way too large to get this detail. So I'm just adjusting the subdivisions. Let's try maybe 500 each, and it will complain, but I'll just hit yes. Um, so now we have a pretty detailed grid and I, I will save now and now comes the nice part so first I'll just rename this guy terrain and I head over to 
deformers deform and then there is a texture deform hit that and then in the texture itself choose a file and head over to that image so let's try this one I'm not sure there's not a big difference you see well there is a difference we'll just need to see which one works best so now the height map is loaded but nothing is happening so to get it working obviously you need to adjust these the strength so let's tr try a hundred not really anything happening go higher is there something happening so something is happening you can subtly see some relief on it so let's go more you can see now something is going on here so let's add a f another zero boom and now you have a terrain in here um, so this is very helpful because you can uh, directly see where you want to place stuff you can see here some water another water stream and then you have the mountains and be aware like this is eight kilometers wide so I will show you an, an image or like I will create a reference of a human which is two meters high how small he actually is so um, let's try maybe a bit higher so the the mountains get even higher if I increase the strength so let's try 15 150,000 I guess it is all right, so I'm saving this now. And now uh, what I want to do, um, I just want to switch those maps and see if there are, if there are some better quality. So I thought, I think I took the second. So let's try the first one and see the detail if there, if, if it's a better quality or if it's exactly the same. I think nothing really changed. So let's try this guy. Yeah, that's changed. So this is a bit smoother, but you still see those bumps. Um, and this is pretty rough here. So let's just move back to one of the others. Let's try this quickly. This is very smooth. And this is, I guess, not right. Okay. So let's just go with the first one and take that. Maybe the strength is also a bit too much. And let's just bring it back down to 100,000. All right, so this would be the environment. Nothing too fancy. So let's just create this reference guy, which is 50 by 50 and then 200 units, scale 200. And if I zoom to him or the reference, and I, let's just snap him over here. and you can see how how large it actually is so it's a very huge environment so just to show it off i will be actually just extracting a small portion of this and i think i will be putting him somewhere here or this will be kind of my my camera view from this location maybe from here and then over the water and then you see this so this will be my view of interest if I can actually do that. Yeah. So let's go up till here. So this is just me marking where I want to render that or actually extract that. Um, and the rest, I guess I will be deleting because it's not, um, because it's not helpful. It's just more data and it's very slow. So, Currently, I'm just deleting those faces. Hitting delete here. And I think, not exactly sure, but let's just delete this side. So I'm actually narrowing down the, the depth of it just to get a faster mesh instancing. So because now this environment is a lot smaller. So if I position this guy here, we still get all this stuff, which is still nice. And I'm not sure what this guy is. It's like a cliff or whatever. And we can actually delete the detail behind it. Let's just get rid of all this stuff as well. And this might actually be kind of a scene setup for an upcoming tutorial, which will be happening after the CryptoMath series. 
Come on. Okay. It doesn't let me select them. Interesting. No. Okay. So this process is obviously a bit time consuming, but the more time you spend on it, the better it will look at some point. Okay. So if I position him here, it's still very huge. But I think we're good. So I'll just try to delete these guys still. It's not v very nice. Obviously, you can do a, a lot better job in if you sculpt it properly. But again, I don't have time for this. Um, I think you can scroll back in the live stream now and you can actually see how I did it. I enabled this DVR function now, so you should be able to go back in time. Okay, so this would be my little terrain. The cube is the reference. Let's just rename this. And hit Alt Alt Shift D to clear the history, save. So now we disabled the history history of this guy. And also before we jump into this, I just want to delete this water quickly. Do I yeah, let's just delete it. Like a rough area for deletion, and then I create a plane which will be the water surface just to get a bit more interesting reflections. It's just the less geometry you have, the less it will be instanced. Obviously you can paint maps where you want stuff to be instanced and not. Um, but for now, I'll just do this. It just, it's a just a bit faster if you do it right, um, right in the first place. Okay, so this is now my little terrain. It's still big enough to actually be huge. So if I create the plane again, polyplane, which will be the water. And let's just scale it up and rotate and move over. So this is kind of now the same effect as having the plane right there. And I can actually change the water height. So if you want a higher water level, we just do this. Which might be even a bit nicer. Because then you can see the trees on the water being reflected. Yeah, I think this is what I will be doing. So this will be my water level. Let's just call this water. And hit save. Okay, so this is my setup. And now let's just go into mash a bit just just to give the basics i guess most of you guys know a lot more about mash than i do um, but i if people are not aware how it works i'll just give a quick demo so if i hide the first geometry here and let's just create a, another plane and scale it up and let's just create a cube and a torus and, and 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 a cone okay so uh, this is now i've got three objects now which i want to instance using mash so um, before we start i just want to tear off the menu just to have it more accessible then i'll s select my instance objects which will be um, those little things which might be your objects your trees your grass your rocks or whatever let me just follow up on the comments. You discussed about setting deep stuff and I have some... Uh, okay. I'm using a simple Wacom Intuos or something. A uh, cheaper model, so it's not the expensive stuff. Just really basic for home use. Anyway, so I'm selecting the objects I want to instance and then I hit Create Mesh network but i'm hitting the option box first and then i make sure i think the default is on mesh i just want an instancer so it, it's a lot more efficient so apply and close and now you can see that these objects are being instanced if i 
you see now we've got this grid pattern and if in the attribute editor you have now the distrib distribute function and you can I don't know change how many you want in the grid and you can animate that and you can do nice lots of fancy stuff for motion graphics um, but I want to scatter them on this geometry so the distribution type I will set this to mesh or oh, mesh not mesh mesh <laughs> it's actually the same and in the input mesh I want to put in my plane which is currently just a default um, square here and you can see they are being scattered around the plane so the more points I add the more is being scattered and currently it's just cues but you imagine it can also be trees and stuff like that um, I think the stream is still good everything is fine let's see here. 56 people watching so uh, that's pretty good I guess it's not the record I think the record was 70 at some point so maybe we'll get there anyways so now you can see we just have what's going on here technical issues again or what I think my Wacom had some issues okay we're back um, so now I want to actually randomize this right so going back to mesh I will just create a uh, an ID I think that's what it's called create an ID node and now you can already see that if you add that it it randomizes um, the objects which are in your mesh instance and you can already see that all these other objects are now being instanced as well and to add more detail to this whole thing you can add a randomizer after that a random node and now you can actually change um, I don't want to change the positions um, but you can add for instance rotation you can see now everything is randomly rotated then you can add different scales so I, I want maybe uniform scales and not absolute so we get smaller and bigger objects right and then you can go crazy on the scattering and also it is kind of live so if I move these objects up and down you can see they actually follow the surface so if I do a soft selection on this um, hitting B changing the radius which is extremely huge uh, where is it soft selection radius maybe 50 And let's just do some weird things. And you can see it's actually going nicely with the surface. The cone, though, is lying on its head or on the side, which is not what it's supposed to do. So there are some options, I think, in the distribute to use the up vector and then disable this. And then you have them facing upwards no matter what. So that's there's a few options and you can I think also offset the whole thing if you want to move everything up a bit um push along normals so you can move them upwards a bit like this so this would be the mesh instance so and then obviously because it's instanced uh because it's instanced you can actually go nuts on the distribution amount so if i say maybe 500 you get 500 objects in here and if I add 1,500, you get that. And it's still amazingly fast because it's all instanced. And now let's just be funny and create an area light uh, in here and move down inside the stuff. Let's see what's happening. If I hit render now, change my render resolution to be a bit smaller. and obviously increase the light exposure maybe not as high and now you can see it's all being instanced wherever my render view went now I think I broke it again oh it is there, no it's not there, let's see let's see if I can bring it back that happens sometimes when I'm using the Wacom it's very glitchy so this is now Maya's render view and you can see now it's all being instance, inst 
pretty much instantly and there is no not really any lag in the viewport so it's it's very nice very fast and now this is what i'm working so now let's try to head over to the proper scene so let's just delete all this stuff hit the mesh editor and remove this whole thing delete the network yes and it's all gone delete the lights and remove the instance and unhide the geo and frame that so this is currently my mesh terrain and now i just want to create another camera kind of at this location here so i'll go into the menu view create camera from view this is my main render cam let's call this guy main and lock it off or just maybe frame it a bit nicer and uh, maybe change the focal length a bit to maybe 50. So I softened the, the mesh itself. And this is now my framing. I like that. So I'm um, storing the camera. So locking the camera. And we have a get go. All right. So think everything is still fine the stream went offline which is interesting so let me see what's going on here I think my have a f has a few issues so let's just I just had to restart Maya so we'll see if that's better and if the stream comes back we'll see Sorry, I'm just typing in the comments quickly. Stream should be back soon. Um, I'm not sure what's happening currently. I think it's because I had the render running all the time in the background, so I. Oh, okay, it, it might still be working for a few guys. Anyways, so let's just open back the scene. And I saved it, so we should be fine. And now let's start instancing proper objects and using uh, a bit different workflows. So first of all, let's bring in a geometry, right? So to do that first, we need a tree or something like that. So. I have kind of a tree already, if I can find, oh, actually I need to hide this guy. Okay, so here we are. So I'll just need to browse wherever my, the tree is. I think it was in a previous session, so let's just go there quickly. This is all my old stuff. Uh, must be here. Maya assets birch look dev okay so I'm importing a look dev scene now and I'll show you what the stuff looks like so it's importing now so we got now a few trees in here Wh you can see there's a dome light and there's a look dev plane so let's just frame these guys this is currently my sphere and I have a few trees so I've got tree one two and three kind of the same trees but a bit variation so i will be using them to scatter and first of all i don't like those namespaces so i heading general going to namespace editor selecting deleting merging with root close so now i've got proper names and let's just call this birch 01 and then just birch 02 and birch Oh, three. So these are my three trees. And I have a really basic look dev on them. So it's just a standard shader, nothing fancy, just scattering, green scatter. And I think I have actually some randomization. I do have randomization in them. And I will at some point create a proper tutorial how this is being set up. But this is now more about instancing. 
so we don't need to worry about that for now i'm just hiding the light source and deleting the original plane and let's zoom or let's just zoom out a bit okay and you can see i don't want stuff being scattered below here so what i can do i can either delete those surfaces or i can use a avoidance geometry which i will also do can you make a cam follow a path like a spline yeah sure you can do that so that's all possible uh, all right so now let's instance those bad boys so i'm selecting the threes in order the trees in order so one two three you can also select them the other way around and then it they are being added differently to the instancer so selecting them opening the mesh menu create the mesh network <laughs> mesh network and make sure it's on instancer hit apply and then they should be scattered somewhere so you can see they are being scattered right there and now i want to um, scatter them on this surface again so we kind of do the same thing so we go into the distribute node and choosing distribution type mesh and then choosing the terrain geometry as my instance uh, surface so terrain goes into the input mesh and now somewhere here we should see a few trees so if i increase the number of points maybe to 100 you can see those trees are being scattered right it's pretty awesome that works very good already so if i zoom into or go into the camera you can see they are very skew which they shouldn't because trees grow straight so I, i'm going to the up vector thing and i'm changing the up vector to be zero so now all of these trees are straight and you can actually see how tiny they are so now obviously you would think yeah let's just add 1500 trees in here and you can see they are being scattered and it looks actually pretty good already so if i unhide my dome light and hit save and let's try to render this there is my little window you see something went really wrong last time and if i change test resolution to be 50 i think i also need to change my um cpu units so not everything is into the render and you can see they are being scattered and it works pretty good already so let's just first change my render settings so we get a lot faster renders and for now change the system course to a lower number and hit save again okay so this would now be the basic setup for instancing objects and you can see it works already um, but now I want to have a bit more control about the whole thing so um, there is another node inside the mesh node which is very awesome which is uh, made for environments and uh, Ian Waters from um, the he's a mesh developer and he had a few um, tutorials on his uh, blog and they are very helpful so I'm actually I I had a bit of a chat with them and got it to working so if you hit the world and add the world node something funky will happen and I, I might have too many original distribution points now so it might take a while I hope it will be fine otherwise we'll just okay you can see now around each tree I scattered before you get these this cluster of trees which is obviously not what we want so in the distribute for now let's just go down back to maybe 50 points and now we have 50 scattered trees with more scattered trees around them so this is currently what the world thing does and you can see it's a bit more um, laggy in the viewport because the tree is not a box anymore it's a lot slower um, but a, a tip would be to actually do the scatter how you like them with really primitive objects and in the end just swap them out with your high poly stuff anyway so in the in the mesh world node you have the option to change the cluster mode to be a terrestrial ecosystem let's choose that and now you can see actually that the trees are kind of growing around this area so smaller and bigger trees there 
and we need to do a few adjustments to scatter those objects. So the first thing you need to do is um, go to the terrestrial uh, drop down menu and add also the same input mesh. So I'm adding the terrain as well to the ground mesh and they are being added. So now they respect the the polygons of the, ge the geometry. Um, I'm not sure what can you change the resolution of the trees means. You can definitely change different instance objects in here, which are lower res, and then swap them out at some point. So that's something you can do. Um, so going back to the world node, it's based on real size units. So a tree is around, I don't know, 30 meters high. And I think in the world node, you can change that. So if you go to the genotype editor, I'm pretty sure that this is in meters, the, the size here, model size, I think it is in meters. So I would put in 30 and then I hit reload and it will reload and redistribute my trees. And you can see now they are scattered uh, w way more, like they are scattered a lot more. Um, I'm not sure if caching instances will work. If you have animations like deforming objects, obviously you need to cache out a, a frame sequence. Um, but like this, I'm not sure if it will be any benefit. You can export the whole thing as an, a stand-in object for Arnold to just be like bounding boxes. But you can also change in the instancer. You can change the view to be bounding boxes and it's then a lot faster. So at, at the beginning, maybe it's it's helpful to do this. And now you can actually see how it's being scattered. So if you change the size to be a bit bigger, let's say 45 is the model size and they get scattered a bit more. And this is kind of a realistic simulator. So you have the max age of a tree. Um, and depending on that, the trees live longer and you get more trees or less trees or whatever. So if I put 250 here, you see it gets less because it takes a longer time to grow. So you have at, in the beginning you have less, but then in the end you have a lot more. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm just reading the comments. He's asking about the viewport display maybe as we can do in speed tree or viewer scatter. I'm not sure what they can do there. Not really sure what what's there. So then in the world node again, and again, I'm not. I just started learning Mesh, and it's very convenient. I guess there's some a lot more tricks to it. Anyway, so in the ecosystem age, you can change how long these trees have been alive, or like it's kind of like you you plant a seed, and 40 years later, you this is what you get. So you plant the trees, and after a hundred years, this is what your um what your trees look like, right? And you can see it's a lot more trees now. And it might even still be too much for for the tutorial to actually show you a smooth simulation. But this is currently what it is. And for now, I want to introduce the avoidance map. So before we go into that, I just want to reduce the age again to 40 so we have faster feedback. And you can see, if you can, there are a few trees at the bottom. So what I want to do now is create a box, a cube, make this bigger and this will be my avoidance mesh. So everything I, I guess inside it will be ignored based on a certain um, threshold. So I will move this box underneath the water like this. And this would be now where the tree line will start. So I can make this a bit higher actually because th the trees don't really grow right up close to the water. So let's say this would be my avoidance map or avoidance geometry. And I just don't want to see that in the viewport. So I go to display um, and I change LOD visibility to be off. So it is there, but it's not in the viewport. And uh, let's call this avoidance object. Move this up here. And I think we also don't want to render that. So let's just turn, turn that off as well. So again, in the mesh, you have this avoidance and you can drop geometry in here. So let's drop in the avoidance object. And this should actually kill all the trees which are should be inside here if the radius is high enough. So if I increase the avoidance radius maybe to 500. Okay, it doesn't work. Let's try a bit more. 5000. 
And we got more trees, interesting. Um, let's move this slider over. Okay, so now they're being phased out a bit. So I think the radius needs to be still bigger. There we go, so now they are gone. And you can see now how it's being scattered. You can see they're coming back in. And this, this ramp here means what is the probability that a tree will be growing at that radius. So um, it really fades off. So if you move the slider over, it will really kill those trees and has a less chance to be actually there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. You can create low poly objects and replace them afterwards. So I think we had our avoidance of five here. Yeah. And then I was just changing the height of the box, I guess. Okay, so trees are coming back in. And you can see now they're starting to grow again. Got a few trees there. And it's obviously, uh, because of this huge scene scale, it's a bit trial and error to get, get it right. But I think this is kind of what I want. So there's no trees underneath the surface. There's one, which is not good. And you can also paint um, hardware, like you can do um, vertex painting as well to make it more controlled. Okay, so now the tree is gone. And now let's just introduce a bit more, let's say 80, 80 years. And now you can see they're being scattered and I hope none of them are below and none of them are here, which is awesome. So you can see they are still in pretty big clusters. Um, you can, and you can change the sparsity as well. You can also, all these parameters are paintable. You can, so you can do all these fancy things, which is very advanced stuff if you want to do proper environments. So this is just a basic thing, I guess. And if let's change the sparsity to maybe a hundred <laughs> and nothing's happening. So they need to have really big numbers. And you can see now I changed it to 10,000 and you, you could see that we got less trees in the center. So there's not this big cluster. You can see that. And if I bring it back to 10,000, um, you can see they are being sparsed out. And so now let's try to fill up, fill up the environment. And currently in the mesh, we have 19,000, uh, 1,900 objects. And it's not a lot, so you can go definitely higher. Um, but first I want to explain how mesh really works or ex especially the world thing. So if I disable the world here, wherever there is a tree, a seed will be planted. And from that point on, the trees will grow. Currently, we don't have a tree on this island, and I want some trees on this island. Um, so what I'm doing before we go into the mash node, I will create a mash place node. And this should go before the world. So we have distribute world and pl uh, placer. Come on. We've got this root placer and then the world. So what I can can do now is I can click add and if everything is right, I can add a tree there. And I want just one tree because from there on they will start growing, right? So, and if I want to place more trees, I can just click, click and I add more seeds. And then from there on, we will get definitely more trees growing. And you can really go nuts on the painting side of things. So anyways, I've scattered them. And uh, let's see if I bring back the world node. Maybe I need to reload it. I'm not sure why I didn't take these guys into consideration. Let's see if I reload this guy. Didn't like it. Unfortunately, didn't like it. In my test, I think this was working. It might be that they are being killed off from the box, from the avoidance map. So if I check that and delete the avoidance for now. Uh, let's just put this to zero or to one. Yeah, so it was the avoidance map. So now you can see they are being actually scattered on the little island. Um, maybe I just need to spend more time on this map here on the avoidance box. Let's just change. So it's it's definitely if you if you 
need to spend more time to get it to work properly. Let's try 100 units would be one meter. So let's go 100, let's go 10 meters. So one meter, 10 meters. Uh, let's just see if we can get this to work. Moving that down, not much is happening. Maybe it's better if you have a plane or something like that. So I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it's way down already. Okay, so I think something happened now. If you have any ideas how to do it better, please share them. There we go. So it's very sensitive, this value, very small values, and then you can get rid of them. So I think this is now good enough. And you can see now we got a lot sparser tree. Oh, there's nothing special here. It's just the editor. Um, right, so if I hit over to the main, so this is currently what I'm seeing through my camera. And let's head over to the mesh object and let's try 125 years and see what we get. So now we have nice trees everywhere uh, we can go maybe 150. Uh, yeah, so this is currently what we have. And we still only have that one tree, right? So if I change my instance cell object to see or visualize the trees, um, let's do that geometry. Let's see how fast that works. So maybe it crashes, but no. So you can see we have the trees now in the viewport. And now I want to have these different types of trees. And to do so, you would need to add another genotype to your, um, to the world ecosystem. So let's, I'm just changing the, the life again to 50. So it's faster hitting the genotype editor. And let's call this guy maybe uh, Birch 01. Caps lock enabled, doesn't matter. And I'm just duplicating this guy. And this would be Birch 02. And this would be Birch 03. And in the instance uh, object itself, you can see that one, a uh, zero, one, and two are the object IDs. And in the genotype editor, you also have object ID, which is on zero for all of them. So birch one is zero, which is right. Birch two is object ID one, and three is number two. So these are the object IDs. And I hit refresh now, and now I should have different kinds of trees being instanced. So it's hard to see, but I'm pretty sure they are different. And let's just bring back the ecosystem back to 150 years. And also in here you have random rotations, which are right there. So it, each tree is rotated 360 degrees random, randomly. So you can see this tree is definitely a different one than this guy. And I think you can also visualize them which tree is which if you lo if you create an ID. I think it's called or is it points? I think it's actually points. Let's see if I can add points. So now we should have fifteen thousand points, and I can change the point ID or the channel ID. I hope to object ID. Yeah, so you can kind of see we've got zeros in the front. There's a one, one, and it's actually based on the instance itself. So wherever the trees are planted from that point on, they are being scattered and regrowing. So you can see the, these clusters of zero and one everywhere. Because tree one was planted there, tree two was planted over there. And you can see it, it's get, it, it gets a lot slower now because of all these viewport display. And the graphics card crashed. So that's cool. Just too much points. Uh, not a problem. Let's just reload it quickly. Um, for now, I'll just bring back the whatever that is, the terrain window. And I'm just, I think I need to reload Maya. So obviously it's not a bad, uh, not a good idea to visualize 15,000 trees in the viewport. So, yeah, that was about to happen. Not a biggie.
<coughs> so and then obviously you can make this a lot more advanced if you start painting maps if you have maybe 10 different variations of trees so um, there's lots of improvement and I'm just scratching the surface with this or I'm pretty sure I am there is lots to learn um, I got lots of RAM and a pretty good graphics card so um, my machine is maybe more capable than others so depending on what you have you should rather always visualize just the oh I hope it won't crash again now We'll see. I hope not. No. So now is uh, again a, f a technical issue. I need to f quickly see how we can fix this. You see, I went too crazy on that. So it crashed again because I reopened the same scene. So I need to see if I can actually load up a previous version of that. Um, incremental saves. So let's just go to an older version. Let's try this one. So I'm I'm luckily I'm I'm using incremental saves and I can just roll back a, a version before where I didn't change those values so crazy. So feel free to ask any questions. I'm reading the comments as I go. Um I actually did check out Ian Waters videos, yes. So what is the view account? Let's see that. 47, that's cool. Thanks everyone for joining in actually. I hope this is an interesting lesson. It's not really look dev, um, but it's something else. So I think it's it should be fine. Um, okay, I think we're back on the water. Okay, let's just hide this guy. So we are back. I'm not exactly sure now where we are but we will find out soon enough so I'm just changing currently the ecosystem to maybe 50 and I think we need to adjust the bounding box because it is not working again or maybe I just need to adjust the avoidance radius or something. I'm not sure exactly when I r open it again, so we'll see. Um, let's see. Okay, the radiance radius is on 10 meters. Maybe try 20 and move the box a bit up. There we go. So now they are being killed off as we increase the height. I think it's just using the surface actually that's interesting so it's not using the volume to kill objects off it's using the top and bottom faces so that is very interesting that's maybe something to flag so let's change the avoidance radius to 50 meters and now we should be good Uh, yes, I work in VFX actually, though, so that's my proper job, yeah. Okay, so we are back in action. So I don't want to really visualize the trees anymore. So I also think we don't have the genotypes in here. So let's head over to the editor exactly. So they are not in here currently. So let's just change. I will add them quickly. Oh, not that. Bridge oh, 01. Damn it again. There we go and duplicate these guys and obviously you know what I talked about so I'm just clicking through quickly changing the IDs to 2 and 1 and you can also randomize the max ages so if you have different species of trees you can definitely randomize those values as well change the growth rate you can play around with the slope threshold which means a value of 1 um, is totally ignoring if the environment has like steep slopes or something if it's on point or it's a, if it's zero it will not be growing on slanting slanted objects so we can try to visualize this here I guess um, 
so let's go to 200 let's make this guy 300 years old and refresh it all so now we have these different clusters again um let's see i'm not sure why they are scattered like this now so one that's correct maybe just my because i because i changed the max age i think it it's got a bit confused now let's try it 100 years yeah so now it's scattering and you can see that these trees are growing on the hillside here i'm not sure exactly which one it is now but i'm i guess it doesn't matter so if i change the slope threshold to 0.01 and reload it um we got less trees there and i think this is exactly what it is doing and if you go to ian waters youtube channel he has tons of tutorials about this and they are very awesome um so this is how to go about that and if you change the model scale you get more scattered objects and i think that's something what i want to do now so um, i just change the model size to maybe 100 and maybe this guy to 80 just a bit more randomization and the model size to 120 and reload this so now they should be scattered a lot more and you can see that's exactly what happened which is something we want to do or see and if i have hit save i think i need to save as though save as maybe just number two after the crash dot mb and i think we don't have the placer node again so i'll need to add that it is there so why is there no trees growing so i guess it's the same problem with the avoidance so i need to move it down a tad and hopefully they come back and they don't so you can see it's very tricky to get this working and it's a bit of a pain like i think it's a lot better to just paint those vertex colors and be done with it um, but yeah i'm just trying to get this working here not sure why the instancer is actually completely being ignored that's interesting anyways so if we just ignore this for now and maybe change the avoidance object to a different radius and anyway so let's just try to add a, a bit more interesting lights in here so i'm just closing down the editor and i'm hiding the dome light for now and i will create a physical sky so lights physical sky and just to get things rendering a bit faster i'm just disabling the world for now so it's faster or actually i'm just disabling the whole mesh network I'm not sure why there are still trees now, but anyways. Saving this guy and that's hidden. Let's see what we get if I hit render now. Obviously there are no, not really shaders assigned. Oh wait, let's just stop this before we go into rendering. Let's just change the system to 40 and the render settings to maybe three and render and change the resolution to 50 and look through the camera so this is currently what we get you can see a few trees are there and this is currently my physical sun so it is currently elevation 45 degrees up and you can see let's if i move to perspective and zoom in somewhere you can see how the shadow is being cast so it's kind of from the front so i just want to rotate the uh, is that this guy i think yeah so this guy is rotating the sun and this other one is putting the time currently so this would be sunset time and this would be kind of a, like a noon 1 p.m time let's add a bit more 
intensity to it and let's change its shadow length a bit like this and let's look through the camera and this is currently what we get so if i rotate uh, the camera uh, the light source you can see the shadows being cast and if i change the elevation you can see longer creeping shadows like this so this is kind of a nice location i think so if you have any questions about this please let me know but i think it's pretty straightforward so you get these trees on on the mountain ridges and if i close this down now let's just do a few basic shaders nothing really crazy because this is not what it's about today avoidance object i'm just um hiding it from the view uh renders where was it display display lod off visibility off so this is hidden so i'm just now assigning a standard surface shader to the water and hitting g for the terrain just rename this more sensible like this and the trees have sh uh, shaders currently so um, i will be just doing some really really basic water shader quickly so there's actually a water procedure which i'm be will be using now this will be um, my code current yeah i use it as a code normal um, bump 2d so out color red goes bump value out normal goes into the code normal like this this will be my water shader um yeah so this is the water being connected and i before we start i want to change the bump value to be off and then i want to go to the viewport and the thing is we don't have any geometry now here this might not work as expected so hmm i will just create another plane oh let's just duplicate this one and move it down so this should be the ground of the water like the underwater terrain i guess and i'll just assign the same terrain shader to this guy and the water will get let's just call this uh terrain underwater something and the water itself will become an opaque off object which means it will be transmissive and it will have transparent shadows so if i render now i hope everyone is following because the chat is very quiet so i'm not sure if everyone is there but i guess so um perspective view so the terrain is currently very shiny so let's just change the shader on the terrain and make it not shiny very rough uh, not as shiny for now and just maybe a brownish color like this and that's my terrain and the water will get a fully um transmit transmis transmissive shader so no specular highlights hitting transmission and increasing that so now we have a transparent water surface you can see that and i just want to change the depth and the color maybe to a blue water it's very dark so let's just change the sun for a second to be more top down so elevation will be from up high and this is currently the water i got nothing fancy but i think if we play around with the depth we should get something working if i'm correct not sure um, why is this not working Let me think about it. So the coat is fine. So that's my shiny surface. That is correct. So the scatter is working as well. And I think we just have a way to de uh, saturated water surface. Different blue. 
and let's just add a muddy base water and let's adjust the depth a bit okay so let's do 500 so five meters in it, it starts to get this milky water i'm not sure it needs to be not white i guess we need some darker values for the water because at a certain depth it's just dark and you can see in the very shallow waters which is close to the water edge it is clear which is what i want and if i bring in the code you won't see it anyways but you can see there is this fall off from the depth right so shallow water is clear the deeper it gets the darker gets the water gets right that makes totally sense i hope and so if i look through the camera you can see it's very shiny and this is why i put it um put the code in a separate spot uh not uh, sorry this is why i use code instead of specular because the transmission relies on the specular roughness and i don't want to have rough refraction so i want to have clear water and then i just want to use the coat as my shiny surface so obviously water is not like a mirror it's there is some little roughness to it. there are particles in the water maybe that's still already too high so let's try a lower value like this um, i hit save and let's go to the hyper shade where i have this water set up so if i bring in the bump depth maybe to one uh, point one, you can see crazy amounts of waves which are way too big so if i increase the frequency to maybe 50 you can see something's going on here wave amplitude is too high let's bring also the overall bump to maybe 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 Okay, so now you can see something more is going on on the surface. And let's try 150. So you need to un remember this is scene scale. So I think even these waves are like 10 meters or something. It's pretty huge stuff. So this would be now very small waves. And I think it's getting a lot better. Obviously, the amplitude is still too high. And we need to add more subwave frequencies maybe to 10 oh that's too much and obviously this is not the best way to do water this is m an old procedural from maya which is i don't know 20 years old or something so i'm not sure if this is the way to go but you can see it's like something's going on it's not very beautiful um but it is it is something which is just more broken up maybe my overall frequency is just too high and this one is definitely too low uh, too high as well yeah anyway so let's roll with this guy and the terrain doesn't matter so um so now let's work with the instance again main camera so let's bring the network back in action we got our trees currently we just have um 50 years so let's try 125 and this is now you can see the water line this now works a lot better you can see they start growing only after the water surface which is perfect and if i hit render now let's see what we get so now we're starting to see a lot more trees and you can see it's um pretty instant and it, uh, unfortunately the shader of my trees is really bad because I really did them uh, very quick. Um, but overall, this demo is intended to just show you the technique and not really show you a beautiful image. So I hope this shows you a beautiful technique. And now you can also see the water behaves a lot nicer just by changing the sun um, elevation. Let's just rotate the sun a bit. Oh, that was too much. I just want the shadows. Ah, okay. Now it was pretty nice like it was, I think. Like this. And I just want to adjust the these hot pings on the leaves, which are very ugly. Uh, perspective camera. You can see it's getting a lot slower to navigate now. Um, where's my little island? 
here. So yeah, I also have a few of them offloading, so that's something to adjust as well. Okay, so you can see now it's very shiny leaves and I'll just adjust the roughness quickly on them. So I, luckily they all share the same shader. So I can just change the roughness on the specular leaves, I guess. Is that the one? Yeah, so you can see by changing the roughness, you get a lot real more realistic trees. And a few of them are floating for sure. So, and you get you can see now even like just changing the roughness, you get you get rid of all those artifacts, all, all these um, fireflies, and that's something to know as well. Like it's not always render settings, and sometimes also shaders which produce the problems. Um, so, kind of this this sums up the demo. Um, I think I showed most of the stuff and based on this information I'm pretty sure you can create very convincing renders and beautiful images. So and before we actually stop I just want to break the system again so if I add more seeds 100 more seed points like so um, if I enable the world now again, it's interesting. I think the slope thing killed them off. So, so feel free to ask any questions right now. I'm checking the comments because I'm more or less at the end of the stream. So I'm just playing around a bit more, but I'm reading the comments. So let me know what you guys think. Um, growth rate, growth th threshold, maybe go up higher. reload this guy. I think I have too too many years on set for those trees. Let's try maybe 150 years. Maybe 125. Now we should have a lot more trees definitely. Yeah, so there are scattered more. Model size 100. Maybe this is also too crazy. Let's go maybe down to 50 on this tree. Reload this guy different you can see there's like a pretty hard line where the slope starts so i'm not sure if my threshold is is the wrong way maybe it needs to be 0.1 oh yeah it needs to be 0.1 interesting so now you can see it's scattered very nicely so a value of a lower value will actually um, put them on the slopes better i think if that's correct Um, I'm not sure, like, the stream is pretty quiet, so I'm not sure if it's if the stream is still alive, but anyways. Um, let's bring in, we've got now currently 15,000. So, and then there is a limitation. You can see maximum elements 15,000, so this is like, it's stopping there. So, um, let's just try to 25,000. So this will be now a lot more trees. And you can see they are scattered now a lot nicer. Uh, and if I hit look through my main camera, you can see they are scattered very nice. Not really on the on the slopes, um, but overall a lot more density. And this is how you can play around with those values. Pretty simple. Um, for the ground shading, I would maybe add noises, fractal noises, lots of fractal noises to break things up. But ideally, you would need to go to Mari or uh, Substance Painter or something just to render out or just to paint a proper projected environment, like a ground, because this is just a l way too basic to be any beautiful render. So um, this is also the idea of this sessions. I just want to show you uh, the techniques and not really produce beautiful images here. So. That's not really the point of this stuff. And you can also see that I'm the sparsity which I set up might be too much. We want to see a bit more clustering. 
So let's try that as well. Mash world. Sparsity is 10,000. Maybe try 3,000 instead. We should have now a lot more clumps of trees, which is interesting, which is nicer, I think. Uh, render again. Let's see what we get now. Yeah, so now we have more of these clumps. And the cool thing about it, they are being scaled. They are being randomized. So everything is pretty exact, which is a very nice feature. And yeah, you can see if I render from the perspective camera, maybe from this angle here. Let's see what we get then. Um, the question is, do you know if it's possible to do a file texture jitter instead of just using hue, color hue, if I want to use a variety of rock textures or scattered rocks? Um, yeah, definitely possible. You can use a switch, switch color or something, plug in your textures there. So you can see it's looking actually pretty cool if you look through the perspective camera. Uh, let's just make the terrain lighter. Oh, that's specular. No more spec. More diffuse. So this is kind of now dunes. Doesn't look as pretty, but yeah. Let's render without this. And this is now my final bucket step without the increments. And you can see it's like it looks pretty cool, like especially when it goes up the hill and you can see the mountains only in the in the valleys and not as much on the on the on the slopes. And the water actually <laughs> looks um, incredibly good actually. You can see how it's fading off, like it's getting darker the deeper it goes and then you see the the shallow where it's shallow it's more transparent and you can see these brighter spots going in. It looks actually pretty cool. And I think if I change the camera angle a bit, we should get this effect a bit nicer. Let's see about that. Yeah, now we get more trees on the waterline. Um, so the question was, okay, I think this sums up the scattering instancing stuff. So this will be done now and I will just uh, answer this one question. So there is a switch is there a switch color? There was a switch, AI switch. Is that the one? Yeah. So the AI switch switches out input colors, right? So if I have an AI flat here, which is my texture, texture one is uh, red. Texture one goes in zero. I duplicate this texture two goes in the next slot. So we've got now input one and two. So if I change the index to one and two, it will be changed out. And what you can do now, um, pretty interesting thing, you can use user data again, user data int, I guess, and the int value will connect to the data slot, like so. And whatever is now in here, let's say I call this um, variance or whatever, variance. The default value is zero, so each rock will get zero. Um, so let's just, I'll just show you a quick demo. Um, mash editor, disabling this guy, hiding all these things. Um, okay, so now, what is this, the sky dome? If I have now two cubes, cube one, and cube two, and cube, three and I sign um, can I sign this I think I can render that should be all red I think yeah so this is how it works and now I have user data in right which has a default value of one so if I have a default value uh, if I now have a default value of one it should be the other color right this is how you swap textures and now the simple thing is you go to one cube or one instance or whatever and you add a constant. It needs to be M2A constant. 
underscore variance. This is how we set it up. Copy that or just copy that just to make sure you have exactly the same name. Change it to int, hit OK. Make sure this is the same. So I'm just repasting it on top. And now cube two has this M2A constant and the extra attributes, right? So here's this guy. So if I render now, it's still, because it's on zero, it's all still the same. But once I change the one cube to one, you can see this will get a different texture. And you can just do this. We can add a random number in here and you can really do the variance right there. All right, yeah, obviously um, for the mesh stuff, you can definitely use vertex color painting to just paint the areas where you want trees. So you don't need to delete the geometry as I did. I was just being lazy, obviously. But yeah, so I have five more minutes. So if you have any other questions, ask them now. And then this Saturday live stream will be over. And be sure to check out the latest tutorial, actually, which was released this morning, um, which is CryptoMat. And I will do a combination of CryptoMat and MASH at some point. So um, if you go to YouTube, uh, oh yeah, I am live. My channel, oh, I need to update it, I think. So, videos. Yeah, so this part two thing is the new one, which is just showing you how to set up MASH, uh, how to <laughs> set up CryptoMet, and then in the end, use this data to actually create your custom mats for nuke or your compositing software um where you, where can you submit bug reports to my light shader tool set that's a good question um and you should be able to just go to the light shader website i think there should be something like contact or not you can just um contact you can just fill it in right here if you want to i'll get that um otherwise i don't think i have a report thing in the ui do i i don't think so so just write me an email using the website and you should be good to go i'm just checking oh uh, interesting light shaders on here um so i have a few more tutorials coming up so one will be uh, let's just check my list Wait a second. Come on, paint baby. So heading to iCloud. So I will be doing like for the material series, I will be working on a milk shader, dry, dry and wet asphalt shader. Um, and bigger tutorials will be um, instancing what I showed you now. I will create a nicer demo of that. And then after that, I think I will do a render setup tutorial, how to do proper render layers with the new render setup system. So these guys here, create a new collection, uh, um, create collection and stuff like that. So I will be showing you how this stuff works. And also color management will be one. Um, yeah. I think this will be, it's it's always very co time consuming to record those tutorials and spend the time on it to make them kind of good for you guys to understand. So depending how I have time, but I'll try to schedule them nicely so everyone um, has weekly updates. So obviously it will not happen all the time, but most of the time, I think. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in and be sure to watch this video. And please, I uh, always appreciate that if you um, like those videos and especially if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel because it just um, shows me your motivation. And if you want to source files of any of those tutorials, um, I have my Patreon page set up. So if you, if you choose that reward tip for the scene files, you actually get the complete Maya scene, you get the HDR lights, and all that fancy stuff. So I would appreciate that as well. If not, um, it's, it's not a problem, but it would still be nice to, sh uh, to get your appreciation. 
cool uh thank you guys for tuning in and um i will see you in the next live session or obviously in the next tutorial bye guys <laughs>